Right, we are in the process of trying to upgrade the sound system on our Range Rover Sport L494. We have already done a video on the amplifier. The amplifier lives under the passenger seat. We've done a video of how to take the seat out and where am I in about the right place? There you Hold go. on, you're looking at the other. Yeah, that's right. I'm about right on it. Yeah, right. Um, right, what we're going to do to try and turn this vehicle into some sonic cathedral of sound is we are looking at the amp, amp the sub, because we need the boom, 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 boom when we're outside KFC car park. And that right, Gary? Gary's don't, 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 Gary. don't bring it up. Don't, oh, I right, know. <laughs> what, section 69? No, right. Anyway, look that up if you don't know what a section 69 is. Right. So I have bought this amplifier. Now, let's go over here and have a look. I've made a little table. Right. I don't know how well this is going to look on the... But I'll put a link to this um, in the comments below. And I'll share this with everyone. But basically, they fitted different speakers in the different sound systems. So this top section here is for the super premium. Oh, that's two and a half kilowatts. 2,500 watt. And then they had the premium audio at 1,200 watt. And then they had the Highline audio, which wasn't really Highline at all, was it? A 600 watt. And then they had the Lowline one at 400 watt. Now, each system had different speakers and a different quantity. Now, I've tried to... I've gone through the Land Rover part system and I've tried to pull out all the part numbers and put them in a logical order. But I think I've got a couple of bits a little bit wrong, but I'm nearly there. But basically, what you've got on here is what the function of the speaker is where it's located, what the Land Rover part number is, if, it, if it's superseded, what the engineering part number is. Now, the engineering part number is what you will see on a bit on eBay or when you pull it out in your physical hand, and I'll show you that in a minute. So these are the part numbers you need to be searching on eBay for, but not these. You really want to be searching for these, right? So these are the top end. These are the top, the top end, and this is the price. So... What we're looking to do today is to fit the amp the subwoofer, which is this part here. Zoom out a little bit, Gary. So we're trying to look out for the subwoofer for the premium system. We are going to fit that in my car and see if it works. So we managed to find one of these on eBay. If you want to buy one from Land Rover, they're four hundred and ten pound. Um, I'm interested what the resistance is because um, I've upgraded the door speakers and we sell those. Um, and they've gone to 8 ohms, and I'm a bit worried now that I've got a speaker imbalance. I might have some 4 ohm and some 8 ohm. So we are going to get the subwoofer out. We're going to show you in this video how to get the subwoofer out, and we're going to see what the difference is. Is the sound box a different shape, or is it literally just this speaker mechanism? We've already crawled over this a bit. It's got four wires. There's nothing active in here. Two of these wires have got four ohms across them and another two have got four ohms across them and you can see the four cables going into the speaker so they are literally just powering the speaker so we're going to have a look how that relates right what you're going to have to do your, your subwoofer is under this seat here so you're going to have to remove this seat right to remove the seat you're going to have to remove these bolts here that are located in the ends of the runners here we coloured them white to make them easier to see on the video that we did. Right, you're going to have to slide the seat backwards, remove the front bolts. You're going to have to move the seats forward, remove the rear bolts. Then, when you've done that, you're going to have to come into the boot, <coughs> throw all your rubbish out the boot, show them the rubbish out the boot. Right, then you're going to have to open this little bit of carpet here and remove the earth. It's probably too dark, but you have to remove your earth connection and make sure it can't reconnect you are then safe right right now you're gonna have to tip the seat back so the seat is connected by the seat belt so you can actually probably tip it back and put it into the back seat and it might have been better if you recline it a bit before you do it it'll give you a bit but we are going to lift it out and move it here because it will be better for our video so let me just do that quickly. I don't think it was too painful last time I did it. You just gotta be careful you don't scratch the door card with the runners. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Right, how am I looking, Gary? Am I out of the back? Yeah, you're out. Just 
You got the seat belt there as well, mind. Yeah, well, it was supposed to be all done. That was supposed to come with it. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll come. Yeah, you hold that for me there. That should. Whoosh. Ah, now we've got the connector to unplug. That's why we disconnected the battery. Before you try and do it, unplug the connector on the seat. Right. So in fact, there's a few connectors we've got to unplug here. I've got a little button I've got to press. It's probably a bit dark. But this isn't the main curve. One, two, they've all got little buttons on. Three, that's now disconnected. Remember to do that before you try and lift the seat out. Oh, that powerful video, they do rubbish videos. They ain't got a clue what they're doing. Got all on your seat. Oh, we're in. Oh, right. There we go. Right. Let's get a light, Gary, and have a look. Where's that light gone? In the top there. It's in the top there, where I put it. Right, let's have a look. So hopefully... There we go, we've got a floor. Now, I'm pretty sure under here, if I can remember how. Oh, look, we've got some carpet coming out. I think we might be better off pulling these trims out. Can you hold the light as well? So I think if you grab under these, uh, you can pull the. tread plates out right, and they're on a little connector there's the we might have to pull pull everything out here because we've got to get under all of this how are we doing ah there's the little badger so this is the cross brace that the seat sits on this i'm pretty sure is our sub woofer so let me just oh, we've got to get that here we Right, let me go and get the other one and we'll have a little investigate. But that's where we're up to so far. Right, I'll come around the other side of the car. We've got Gary in there. So let's just pull that carpet back. Now what we've done is we've taken the subwoofer out so that we could colour the fixings orange. Now I've left Gary doing this, so he's gonna have to help explain what he's what he's doing. He's worked it all out though. Yeah. So you got four ten mil um nuts ah. yeah i can see there down yeah. those little you got one two three up in this corner here there's one right over there yeah yeah. yeah down there the and there's man. one there so i'm oh, sorry how many six yeah four four hold on there's four no one what about these here yeah these are eight mil uh, eight mil right i'm yeah. with you yeah you'll see what that right i got it So it's sort of in the corners ish, isn't it? Yeah. Right. And they're all screws the same for those, do you reckon? Yeah. There's no long ones at the back or short ones at the front. <clears throat> Anything complex? Yeah, these are just nuts. The oh, they're nuts. Okay. Yeah, oh, you yeah. got you got. There are studs in the um. In the floor. Yeah. In the floor. Okay. That's easy then. Yeah. And I was using these little magnet things to get them because they're. Oh, top tip. Let's have a look at one of them when you got it out. Oh, so they're just flange nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's a good little. Yeah, you're not gonna. Right. That's four of them. Yeah. Cool. Oh, my arm's getting tired holding this light. Hold on, I'm gonna swap hands. Yep. Right, go on then, I'm getting old, Gary. And then these eight mil ones. And they're funny looking things, what are they? They like super flange nuts. Go on. Oh, no, no, so they're bolts, but with a yep. monster flange on them. Yeah. Yep, got it. Right. <laughs> Oh, is that the air vent? Yes. Yes. That's for my, that is for my seat cooling, I'm guessing. Yeah. I think, yeah, it blows so the air. This is connected under here. 
Yeah. He travels up under the you know, footwell. Yeah. Underneath the frame and then cool. yeah, that comes out. Yeah. So you've got a connector in this corner. Just yeah. push push down on that little tab there. And that if you pull that, disconnect Good. that. And then that is pretty much everything to get it out. Yeah, but it just, does take a bit of wiggling. You gotta just He just sort of fights you. You gotta get it out perfectly square or incoming probably. And that can I help you? Go on, go on. Let me give it. I'm gonna put the light down and give it a man. Yeah. All right. Let me. Get, I'll get this back. Oh, there you go. Oh, he's done it. See? Yeah. I didn't even help him. So there it is. Right. Well, let's get out and have a look at that one compared to the super two and a half kilowatt one. Right. So we've got them out. They're on the bench. So this is our system this is out of the 1200 watt system this is the base setup now and this one is the one that we bought off ebay um and these retail that the retail price on these two systems is about the same in fact i think this one's actually slightly more expensive oddly because this one's got the more powerful base speaker in but the plastic cage they're in is the same so actually if we can locate and we will try and find just this base speaker, all we actually need to sell you is this base speaker because, and it just screws in because the two base boxes are the same shape. There's no difference. We've crawled all over it. <clears throat> and in fact, the connectors are the same. Where's the connector, Gary? I've lost the, can you rotate it around and show us the connector? There we go. So the connector there, the coloring there, the pin out there is the same. <laughs> Yeah, I'll flip them both over, Gary. So you can see there, that one and that one is the same. And obviously they've got the part number. So this is the part number here for the standard one that's in our car. Or that we've got premium, haven't we? But not the super premium. And this is obviously the part number for the super premium one. So that's what we're going to do. Right. Now, I was talking earlier about are the resistances different? So this is where we are going to do a bit of resistance checking. So right, how can we? How many hands do we need to do this? Go. Oh, that'll stand up on its own. Right. So if you give me the meter and you put it onto ohms, Gary. Right. And let's have a look how many ohms we get. If you film the the meter there. So actually, just do a little. <coughs> so I'm going to take these these two pins towards the edge of the device. Oh, there you go. I could see it without. Right, what sort of resistance have you got there, Gary? Hold on, I'm not on it. I can't. There you go. Oh, sorry. Around two. Around two, yeah. Yeah, 1.92, yeah. Right, now let's try the out, the, these, the next two. Hold on, if I can. Just. I just can't. There we go, there we go, I'm on it now. Yeah, same again. It's two. Yeah. Right. So that's what was in my car, right? Now let's try the deluxe super premium. So we'll measure the same two, the same two, these two near the edge. Yeah. That's... Four. So that's four yeah. compared to two, right? Yeah. Right. And then let's have a go on the next two there. And four. that's four instead of two, okay? Yeah. So, right. So what have we learned? So, the, summarise. So the one that was in my car on the 1200 watt system has a resistance on both those base circuits of two ohms. This one has four ohm. So I think what we need to do is where we've changed the door speakers, I think we're going to get better sound because this one will actually be taking too much of the power and not enough of the power will be going to other parts of the car. So it may be more bassy, but we may be overdriving this because it'll be out of balance. We've got to have all the circuits balanced. So I think we're probably going to recommend people to change. We're going to do this and see what it sounds like um, and let you know. Um, we will, right. Anything else we need to say, Gary? Anything else we've learned? So we're going to see if we can source just the speaker upgrade. We'll see if we can find that. There is a part number on this speaker here on the edge, but it's the same part number as the whole unit. So that didn't help us very much. So, right, we will join you again when we've put all this back together in the car and we'll power up the system and see what it sounds like. 
Right, one little bonus feature I've noticed. So this is, when this is installed in the car, it goes with the speaker facing down. And you'll see it's got this, this slot here with this tape around it. And I was a bit puzzled as to why that is. Do you want to just grab a light there? And why it is, is quite interesting. If you look in the floor of the car, they've given you this section here. And this seems to go into almost the chassis rail underneath the car. So it's using the chassis rail as a sort of part of the base transmission thing, um, which is quite interesting. They've obviously worked it all out and needed some extra volume for the base um, subwoofer. Um, yeah, and so it, it seals around. You can see where the seal goes around. So there we go. That's quite interesting how they're actually designing the car and using a cavity that exists on the car. 10 out of 10 to Land Rover for that, that's pretty. And this is obviously a sealant where they've sealed the floor to the, to the chassis. Interesting.